The Greenland ice sheet actually contains enough frozen water to raise global sea levels by about seven meters, which is enough to flood most of London, Bangkok, New York, Shanghai, you name it. Many scientists focus on two degrees of warming as the tipping point that will fundamentally change how we live on this planet. We are very close to the slippery slope right now. Some scientists already say it's probably too late to save the Arctic. I don't agree with that, but I do think we're very close to going to a situation where we would have no ice in the Arctic in the warm season. This could be where global warming becomes a runaway train. Warming accelerates the loss of polar ice. The loss of ice accelerates warming. More water from melting ice absorbs more of the sun's heat, melting the ice sheet and heating the planet even faster. The warmer it gets, the faster it gets warmer. That's when global warming becomes a chain reaction we can't easily predict. If a rise of two degrees doesn't push the planet to the tipping point, many scientists predict three degrees will. If the world warms by three degrees, the Arctic is ice-free all summer. The Amazon rainforest is drying out. Snow caps on the Alps all but disappear. El Nino's extreme weather patterns become the status quo. The Mediterranean and parts of Europe wither in searing summer heat. This could be our world plus three degrees. In a three degree warmer world, these kinds of summer heat waves will just be the norm. So an extremely hot summer by this point will actually bring the kinds of temperatures into Central Europe that you now experience in the Middle East and in Northern Africa. The summer of 2003 may have opened a window onto life in a world that's three degrees warmer. All across Europe, an unrelenting heat wave developed into a natural disaster. Paris tends to empty in the summer. Many elderly stay behind. Nobody could have anticipated the danger they'd be in. Jamais auparavant. Never before would I have thought it possible that one could die of heat stroke at the beginning of the third millennium in Paris. It was a terrible awakening. Emergency room doctors were the first to realize something was terribly wrong. Around the 6th, 7th, 8th of August, we started getting red flag warnings. The patients arrived and died from heat. This was not a pathology we used to be faced with. Emergency room doctor Patrick Palou quickly realizes the heat wave is turning into a catastrophe. You had such a heat wave comparable to a flamethrower igniting an entire area. The number of people who died on the night of August 10 is between 2,500 and 3,000. The city's distinctive metal roofs were designed for an earlier era to protect against winter chill. Now rising temperatures have turned them against the Parisians. In Paris, the roofs are made of tin. Inside, the houses became a real oven. The death toll would top 30,000 across Europe. In France alone, over 14,000 died in just a few weeks. 
la canicule de 2003 et la the première... The heat wave of 2003 was probably the first huge catastrophe due to global warming that affected a rich country. A rich country that thought itself to be protected from everything. Well, that was wrong. If global warming increases to three degrees, it won't be the end of all life in Paris. But the character of this great city could be changed forever when extreme summer heat waves start coming every summer. During the heat wave of 2003, another little-noticed phenomenon among Europe's trees and plants was unfolding, a kind of vegetation backlash. Photosynthesis was breaking down. Under normal conditions, plants and trees are a first line of defense against greenhouse gases, absorbing CO2, then converting it into oxygen and releasing it back into the atmosphere. But in the extreme heat that summer, some plants retained oxygen, releasing CO2 into the atmosphere instead. Philippe C.S., a carbon cycle scientist, noticed unusually high levels of CO2 in satellite images of Paris. We saw a large release of atmospheric carbon dioxide to the air from the vegetation. The trees were not able to take CO2 like they normally do, but they were emitting, releasing CO2, outgassing CO2 to the atmosphere. What happens to the biosphere if one of the planet's most important mechanisms for converting CO2 into oxygen stops working on a regular basis?